Hey kids, welcome to Stop Rumble Drawing Time Thing. So before I start, I mean, you probably read the title and you can see all these dogs and cats. I don't think there's any cats. Horses. Those are horses. So we're going to talk a little bit about animals today. But we, before we start, I just want you guys to know that our good friend Scripter has finished the line thickness controller for 14, version 14. So I'll put a link to that down below if you guys are interested in checking that out. Of course, he has his master controller, Dealey up as well a bunch of other little things and if you guys are looking for any new programmed modules stuff like that in particular please leave comments down below and maybe scripture will get inspired and build some new toys for us oh i got my first like negative comment um where it says don't understand what the hell you did you're the worst video explainer and i'm just so happy that i got like a negative comment because i haven't had any i got my first dislike but i was waiting for someone to tell me that i'm awful and so i've hit a new milestone on my youtube channel i feel like i'm a real youtuber now so let's get to these animals. Obviously, we've got a big pile here. No hot beverages mentioned that they need to rig some quadruped animals. So I'm not going to rig any today because I don't have any of the artwork set up. And I have no free time because this time of year is just busy for, <laughs> for animation studios. So what I did is I just, I'm going to talk a little bit about what you think about when you're drawing animals and whatever kind of creature you're drawing, I always, always recommend going to the skeleton first because then you can really see and and if you can compare the two it really helps you to think when you're moving them like maybe for a real illustrative style you don't need to get too much into the anatomy of stuff but if you're going to be moving that around or rigging it you really want to look in there and see what's happening so most creatures i mean our, our arms are built the same and our legs are built very much the same in mammals it's just that our bones are a, just arranged a little bit differently so with the dog this is a dog's shoulder right here. Let me I'll switch to red so you can see. So here's the dog's shoulder, and here's its elbow, and here's its wrist. These are actually like these bones here, and the dog walks on its toes, this stuff down here. Boop, boop. This part's pretty straight, okay? So if you're looking at a human arm, it would be like that, where their fingers are just resting on the ground, and then our neck. Yeah. So you want to take that knowledge if you're rigging and then try and break the pieces up in a sensible way based on the joints. Um, so here's your shoulder joint, your elbow, your wrist, and then finger, like the hand bones, and then the fingers down here. So you'll, you'll want to break this piece off this shoulder blade as well depending on the animal like here in this dog you could get away with not having a very visible shoulder blade if you had to do a cartoon of it boop, boop. um here wiener dog this is a pretty pixelated i just i googled weimaraner for this one and i googled wiener dog so i'm sorry if i'm being like a monster copyright wise right now so here's this little wrist Here's his little hand bones. Here's his little finger bones. So you want to think about that when you're when you're rigging this front area and check out the skeleton so you can really see the back leg as well. This is a femur. Then you have your tibia. And so if this was a people leg, it would look like this. And then this is the heel up here. This part here is the dog's heel. And it comes down and here's the toes. So. This is what a people leg would sort of look like if it was uh, matching up. Like that heel is held really high in the air and then the dog walks on its toes. So if you're rigging this part here on the dog, you want to think about each of these joints and, and just think about where the, the dog's leg moves. So you want to break up these pieces, put your joint here, put your joint here, bigger one up here. Bone deformers can work for dog limbs. Um, you could do like a simple auto patch here. Any of the things that I use for elbows would work well. For the dogs, it's really what works best for you. You might want to think about putting an envelope deformer around this because when the dog's leg comes up, um, it the shape of it bulges quite a bit along here. So here it's quite long and square. Boop. So you think something like that, but when it comes up, you might want to have some, some bunching. 
sitting as well, you're going to have uh, to do some redraw. It's, it's very difficult to rig a dog's leg to be able to sit the hind leg um, because this part needs to change quite a bit. But you still want to think about here's the ankle yeah, of this long foot bit, this guy here comes up to the knee. This thing goes back. And this part of the dog's knee here, like this is where you get that fat bit. So here you got quite a fat uh, kind of haunch. The knee joint here. Uh, it, it, it just tends to be really broad, which is how you get that square look when the dog is sitting. So by breaking down the anatomy like this and seeing how they bend and what's under there, it's going to be a lot easier if you're drawing it or if you're you're rigging it for sure. And then you just think about how the muscles lay on top of that. And the muscles are very similar to human muscles. They're just, it's just that their knee is quite, they don't have a kneecap. Like our kneecap would be right here. They don't have one of those. This part's quite square, their knee. And then this this is quite lean. The muscles are, are fairly similar. So if you have a, a decent understanding of how human muscles work, then you can start to see how this mass is built up. Um, if you are rigging a series of dogs, I recommend starting with the taller, leaner dogs first and then working your way down to this because rigging these tiny joints is very difficult. I've had to animate some little dogs recently and they just, they have these tiny little bodies these and, and big joints. So if you think about putting in circles like this, they're almost overlapping one another for a rig. So you'd have all these little like giant circles and tiny, this tiny dog leg. So, I mean, personally, it's almost easier just to draw that, to draw, like redraw this, this haunch part. But uh, usually you'll actually just see it like this. So this part will be one piece and this part will be one piece. This part will be one piece. And it just gets very busy. Drawing little dog legs is fun. <laughs> oh, look at his little dog legs. Oh. This kind of thing, the skin stretched between here, um, that's something you don't really see much on cartoon dogs. I'll just go look at some other things. See, like there's no skin stretching here. That's been simplified to just, you know, a couple little lines. Um, they've just kind of decided, okay, we're going to have two lines at this joint, two lines. Of, and that's kind of how we're going to deal with this skin situation there. Um, and because this is hand drawn, of course, there's not, it doesn't have to be nearly as piecemeal. Um, so they get these beautiful, uh, just shapes that are all one unit. So if you're doing hand-drawn stuff, you can really play a lot with the shape of these and you don't have to think so logically about um, breaking it up into these little pieces like this. But you still need to know where those joints are and know that they've got this big blocky knee here, um, that their thigh is quite fat and then it leans out quite a bit. And then this is their little toes. So you can see any of these dogs here are going to have these built in and then the shoulders as well. So there's no big shoulder blade here. There's a little indication on that guy. He's got a little roundy bit, but this guy, you can see they've just simplified it out. They've got a little indication here, maybe of shoulder blade. And then they're aware of where these joints are like that. Boop, boop. Often you'll see, um, people simplify the leg a little bit too much. So they'll think about a human like this. And there's just, there's one extra piece in there that if you want your dog's legs to be, to resonate as a dog's, you need this joint up here. You can't, um, you can't treat this as a hand. You have to think of this as two pieces there. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. Skeleton, so helpful if you're rigging. Then you have to worry about if you have fluffy dogs, rigging that is just difficult. There's just pieces. You have a choice of having like an awkward hand that kind of has weird fluff breaking off, or you can separate all these little fluffs. Depends on really how much time you have to animate things. Um, that's, that's kind of a, you're gonna have to make a call. 
So horses, I included horses because they're very similar to dogs. And by that, I mean, uh, like cats have quite, their arms are different. They, cats have the ability to rotate their hands or their paws. Dogs don't. Dogs can only do this. And I mean, that's not important for cartooning. You can do whatever you want. But the structure is, is very much the same in these animals. Okay, so here you have your hip. And you can see their femur is relatively short compared to a human femur. Then they have their tibia here, fib, tibia, fibula. Do they have both of the bones? They have a tibia. It doesn't say if they have a little fibula. That's a, the little floaty guy. Um, and then this is their ankle right up here. This is their ankle. Okay, that's that's important. Down here, that's uh, this, like the ball of your foot. Or think about like the front, the, the, this is their, um, this part here on their finger, on their hand. This is their wrist. That is the horse's wrist here. <laughs> this is not the horse's wrist. It's the same as the dog. This is the dog's wrist up here. And this is their, this, this part. And then a horse. So here's their wrist. That's the ball of their hand, this part. And then this is their finger. They just have a finger and they run on their tiny little horse finger. And horse hooves, uh, you can see this kind of shape here. That's uh, an important shape to play with, to think about how the hoof shape goes. So if you're doing horses specifically, I just really recommend taking a long look at the, um, this shape because that's gonna give your hoof a lot more of a horsey feel. It's just gonna feel more genuine. If you're doing something more realistic like spirit, did I, yeah, I have a spirit here. So you can see that they've got um, just a little difference here between that fingery bit and the hoof. And it gives a little bit more of a, a horse feel. Of course, you can completely break that down into ultra simple terms. So here we have the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the finger, the hoof, loop, and then you got this up here. And you're seeing the same thing on spirit here, like here, 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 yeah. And then here you're getting your wing and you're not getting too much of a, an indication here, but I think in certain scenes you do see more of the shoulder blade, but then the ponies, like here's their elbow, they don't have any sort of big shoulders. They just have little um, almost human connections here. They, they don't emphasize that area at all. Um, and then they just simplified this whole area here like that. They just made it one big shape. That's this here. There's no hoofs at all. And they only pay attention to this little piece. They don't, they don't consider that. So as it's very useful to know where this anatomy and stuff is going to be. But of course, you're not, because you're cartoonist, you're not limited by that at all. Um, knowing it is just going to give you the ability to make uh, more educated des decisions. And here we've got another one. They don't show this big uh, shoulder blade piece up here at all. But they do, um, their arms are very human looking. They're very simplified, but here they do have the big haunch. This guy here, like the big thicker haunch. Um, and then they, their hoof goes back, it just goes back in space. Boop, boop, boop. And then they've simplified down that piece. So they've just decided I'm going to keep this part and keep this part and then just simplify all of this down here, the hand and make it one big chunk. I also want to just briefly take a peek at some other animals and you go, go to the skeleton to see what's under there. I don't have a cat skeleton, but um, I really wanted to show Shere Khan because uh, it's some of the most amazing animation that ever happened. I believe Mick McCall animated it. I, I feel like that's right. Um, but this this big shoulder blade here is really emphasized in those drawings and it really makes it feel cat-like he also has a very feline wrist um like i said cats can roll their wrists it's quite different from uh, a dog so you you can't just say a cat and dog are the same they have very similar anatomy but they're definitely you, you can't just trade one for the other 
the movement is very different. Here we have an elephant who, I mean, it must have been Aaron Blaze, right? Like he's the animal. <laughs> He's the, he's the guy. If you if you want to know more about animating animals, Aaron Blaze is definitely the guy to go to. He's like super rock star. I've never been a huge animal person. I, I know enough. I've taken an animal anatomy course, so I know enough to get by, but I certainly could not ever imagine designing something this wonderful. Um, okay, so here we have the actual anatomy of an elephant, and their hands are quite different again from cats or dogs they're totally different here we have the shoulder they're actually more like people so here's the shoulder i need a visible color here shoulder elbow wrist and then they walk on their hands you can see they have little hands in there and like their their feet don't look like little hands but this is their little hand so it's much more like a human arm on an elephant these the, like this is so cool though like they've broken this so much because they just got these be like beautiful hanging skin i can't imagine animating this so cool and they're here again you've got such a human looking leg like they're this is their foot they're still walking on their toes but their foot is much smaller and it's not lengthened um this part here is not lengthened nearly as much their hand almost feels a lot more proportional. I think a bear, I can't, I can promise you, I'm going to look up a bear skeleton really fast. A bloop. So let's check out these. Yeah, so this, you can see hip, knee, and then their ankle, and they're walking on their hands. So it's like a person bent over walking on their, their flats. Oh, that's neat. I wonder how accurate that is. Oh, there you go. Check that out. They have little feet in there. Weird. <laughs> Cat skeleton. So, like, similar to dogs. Your shoulder, elbow, wrist. This part here is a little bit shorter. And they have more articulation. So I'm clicking stuff. <laughs> they have shorter pieces here. It's not quite as profound as the dog. But they have much more articulation in that joint. So you definitely want to keep an eye on that. Uh, watch some cat videos. There's there's basically infinity cat videos out there for you to watch them and see how they can use their paws to scoop and roll. Dogs cannot do that. But like I said, if you're doing something ultra cartoony, I mean, you can get away with so, so much more. The 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 elephants in Tarzan are incredible. They're just the most amazing designs. Uh, Shere Khan, the cat movement that he does in the Jungle Book is so cat-like. And so it's it's totally worth your time to go and watch how he moves and watch how the specific animal that you want to animate is moving. Not only because it'll help you with your animal animation, if you have to animate your cats or dogs, but it's also just an ex like an experiment and a thought about how different creatures can move in general. Um, so if you watch some of the How to Train Your Dragon making videos, the animation in that, Toothless is a, is a big kitty cat. <laughs> so the movement of Toothless was really thought of as like a cat-like movement. And so if you watch that and you think about how cats move, you can see that in the animation. So I don't know how helpful this was. I just want to talk a little bit about animals and how fun it is. And some of the animated movies, like the, the new... <laughs> I, I really like the My Little Pony movie. Uh, I met the lead compositor on that movie. I was talking about the opening scene. If you just watch the opening scene from an effects compositing standpoint, you can just, it just starts sweating profusely because <laughs> it's just such a massive scene. Uh, I was like, oh my God, I, I, like that, that scene alone just like freaking blew my mind. So I highly recommend the My Little Pony movie for um, the animation style in there. It's really good. I don't know what the plot was about. I didn't really watch movies for plot. <laughs> of course, All Dogs Go to Heaven, uh, Lady and the Tramp, Spirit, all these great things. These are just like Google images. I'm sorry. I used them without permission. I'm a monster. And Jungle Book and Tarzan, of course. So good. I'm very, uh, when I was searching for different cartoon animals, I did, I found myself very Disney locked in. I'm not sure if Spirit is Disney, but I feel like everything is Disney anyway. Um, so if you have good 
animal and i don't mean anthropomorphic animation but actually animals that are acting more like animals like the lion king another disney movie uh leave your recommend recommendations down below because i feel like i've i've done that thing where it's like oh, disney just animates everything <laughs> all right so that's it for tonight i gotta go get to doing my job that pays the bills if you have any requests please leave them down below i am going to get back to the fairy soon it's just kind of sitting on the back burner. I'm also, I, I would need to do the mouth charts and eye blinks. And I don't know if you guys are interested in watching me do that. It is just a lot of like tedious stuff. But if you're interested, I will record it and post it since I'm going to do it anyway. So let me know. I just threw my pen. Thanks for dropping by. <laughs> like, share, subscribe. All those things that people ask you to do. And I will see you in the next video.